Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Dear beloved Reverend Fathers, Deacons and Blessed Community of the Diocese of Melbourne, wishing you all a new year full of hope, joy and success and a holy and blessed Feast of Nativity. The purpose of the whole creation was love. This love came from the Holy Trinity, where we see the perfection of love. In the Holy Trinity, we see the perfect image of love, love between the Father and the Son, between the Father and the Holy Spirit, and between the Son and the Holy Spirit. This holy relationship of the Holy Trinity is the perfection of love. God works in humanity through this perfect love of the Holy Trinity. God wanted to share this love and that is why He decided to create the world and all that is therein. He created everything perfect and beautiful and crowned his creation with Adam and Eve. After this, the book of Genesis tells us, then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good, as mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 31. God wanted man to understand this magnificent love that occurred through the creation of the world. God wanted man to understand this love and live by it. That is why God commanded man to have love for his Creator and for his fellow human beings. When the lawyer asked Christ, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? The Lord answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first com great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, as mentioned in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. The image of the Christ child in the manger is a wondrous image. It is an image that bears many meanings and one can contemplate on it and delve into its meanings for a very long time. It is an image of sacrifice, of emptying of oneself, of true humility and ultimately of boundless and perfect love. Of this image of the Christ child in the manger, Saint Habib Gerges writes in his religious journal, The Vine, on the Feast of Nativity in 1905, saying, This lowly place is the one that was prepared to receive Jesus at his birth. How astonishing is this matter! How great is this meekness! How great is this renunciation! The God of glory and the Lord of the universe and the Lord of creation is born in a manger for cattle, and his bed is the feeding trough of animals. How sacred is your life, O Jesus! And what a splendid example of great humility! Hence, my brethren, we need to kneel every day with great amazement and meekness in front of the Christ child in the manger. We need to contemplate on this great mystery and sacrifice of love. We need to be thankful every day for the birth of the Savior of the world. If it were not for his birth, Salvation would not have come to us, and we would still be in our sins. In every reflection, we will discover a new wonder 
about this beautiful, loving image of our God and Savior. He will draw you in to have a conversation with Him. And hence, do not look at this image superficially as the world does. Images of the Christ child in the manger may be found in shopping centers, in front of people's homes, in the streets, and various other places. However, we must not pass by this image without stopping to pray, to think about God's love and mercy towards us, and to engage in deep and meaningful dialogue with the Savior. In such a dialogue, we will find the Christ child with outstretched hands, welcoming us with his pure love. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes, as it says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. As St. John the Baptist also cried out when he saw Christ Jesus coming towards him, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, as mentioned in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 29. This is the loving Christ child, my brethren, who does not judge us if we repent and live righteous lives. He will welcome us as did the father of the prodigal son. When his son repented, he welcomed him with open arms, full of forgiveness, love, hope, and joy. The Christ child could not find a place to lay his head, and today many have turned away from his love and salvation. Many are puzzled by him and cannot understand this great mystery of godliness that St. Paul speaks about to his disciple Timothy, saying, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory, as mentioned in the first epistle to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. So then, we need to open our hearts and receive the Christ child this day, and there he will find a place of rest. In the book of Proverbs, God calls out to us, saying, My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways as mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 26. Truly, when we give Christ our hearts, we will know and see his ways, his ways of truth, mercy, and justice. Hence, when we see injustice in the world against any person or peoples, we will not bear to keep silent we will then be able to reach out to the poor, to the downtrodden, and to those that have no one to care or ask about them in their tribulations. We see today the refugee crisis in the world and so many millions of innocent people that have lost their homes. Many of them have been removed unjustly from their homeland, including many of our Christian brethren in the Middle East. So we will remember that the same happened with our Lord. He was driven from his homeland and from his birthplace in Bethlehem and came to Egypt. 
However, God turned this evil action of Herod the king into a blessing for all of Egypt. We pray to the Christ child of the manger to shine his love on the earth and to open people's dark hearts that his love may reign in them. We pray for love and peace between all the nations of the world. We pray for our mother church in Egypt, our patriarch, and the members of our Coptic Synod, that the Christ child might keep them in peace and harmony. Wishing you all a successful new year and a blessed feast of nativity. Be absolved through the Holy Spirit, and glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.